Hello everyone! Today I'm going to read a story for you called Anklet for a Princess. This is an Indian Cinderella story. So it's like the story of Cinderella, but it's got some twist to it because it takes place in India. Anklet for a Princess, a Cinderella story from India. Story by Lili Lili Mehta, adapted by Meredith Brucker, and illustrated by Yoshan Tang. Sinduri walked down the road to the lake. Her feet dragged through the dust as she balanced a heavy pot on her head. She was on her way to fetch drinking water for the family. With a tired sigh, she thought, When I get home, I must milk the cows, clean the house, prepare yogurt and cheese for tomorrow's meals, and milk the cows again. Then I will have to clean the animal pens and pick vegetables to sell to our neighbors. Later, she knew there would be more long trips to the lake for water for the animals. When Sinduri arrived at the water's edge, she paused to stare out across the rippling surface. She thought of the days when her life had been happier, when her parents were alive. Sinduri sadly remembered the epidemic of cholera that swept through their village. Within a few days, her father and mother had both died of the disease. When she was left, then she was left with her stepmother, a woman who cared only for her daughter, Lata, and had no love to spare for Sinduri. Sinduri's eyes were shimmering with tears as she thought about how much she missed her parents. Suddenly, she was startled by a showering burst of water right in front of her. She pulled back in fear as a great white snake rose up out of the lake. Her eyes were blinded by the shine of the bright jewel on his bobbing head. He hissed a question. You are a beautiful young girl. Why are you so dirty and dressed in such ugly rags? Sinduri tried to answer politely. There's much work to be done since my father died. My stepmother and her daughter hate farm work. They like to ride to town every day in their carriage, and so I am left to complete the chores. You do all that work for your family to maintain the farm. Why then do you look so hungry? I do not need much. When my stepmother and stepsister go to feast at the houses of friends, they sometimes bring me back a little something to go with my bowl of rice. The snake was furious. Rice and a few handouts? That's not enough to eat. With a darting motion of his head, the serpent produced a golden plate, and there was a beautiful display of East Indian foods. The almond rice, lentils, flatbread, curries, and sweet milk delights gave out a tantalizing aroma. Sinduri was hungry, but before taking the plate, she pressed the palms of her hands together and bowed to show her thanks to the snake. There's her, and there's the snake. When Sinduri had finished enjoying the meal, the snake said to her, I would like to make life easier for you from now on. Every day when you come here, I will bring you sweet, fresh water from the bottom of the lake and plates of delicious food for you to eat. You will never be hungry again. Oh, that is wonderful, she said. I can then use the little bowl of rice my stepmother gives me to feed the peacocks and the green parrots from our garden. You are a good girl, he replied. You are thankful for what you are given, and you never say one bad word about that stepmother of yours who treats you like a slave, or her daughter who is so jealous of your beauty. That is why I am adopting you as my goddaughter. Now we are family, and I will do anything for you. You are the answer to my prayers, dear godfather, said Sinduri, but how will I find you again? The snake taught her to hear this magic turton. The snake taught her this magical song. Godfather Snake, oh Godfather Snake, Godfather Snake of the Magical Lake, come to my help for your daughter's sake. He told her, come to the lake and sing this whenever you are sad or hungry or if you need my help. Sinduri's stepmother noticed a change in the girl during the following days. You certainly look happy and well fed to lately, Sinduri. Hurry off now and give me some more of that wonderful water you have been bringing home, she ordered. She liked the water that was crystal clear and cooler and sweeter than she had ever tasted. As soon as Sinduri left, the old woman said to her daughter Lata, I want you to go after Sinduri. Oh, mother, it's hot today. I don't want to go outside, Lata complained. I don't care, her mother snapped. You must follow that girl. F 
find out wherever she is getting such tasty water and why she returns each day with a smile on her face. Lata sneaked behind Sinduri until they got to the lake. There she heard Sinduri singing. Godfather Snake, oh Godfather Snake, Godfather Snake of the Magic Lake, come to my help for your daughter's sake. The snake appeared at once. Hiding behind a rock nearby, Lata put her hand over her mouth to stifle a terrified scream. Then Lata watched with surprise as the snake presented Sinduri with a plate of delicious treats. While the girl ate, the snake disappeared under the water. Down, down he went, and reappeared with a pot full of cool, clear water. Thank you, dear godfather. This water is like a drink of the gods, and you have been kind to feed me these delicious sweets, Sinduri said, putting her hands together to bow in his direction. Godfather Snake stared at her intently, the jewel above his eyes shining brightly. Zinduri, I want you to look at yourself, he commanded. You are as beautiful as a princess. She looked down at the reflection of the rippling water. She saw skin as smooth as silk, eyes that curved gently into an almond shape, and lips as rosy pink as the pomegranate. Oh no, godfather, she protested. Lata is the pretty one. My stepmother told me so. All godfather, all grandfather, all it says grandfather, but I think that might be a typo. All Godfather Snake said in his reply is, Someday you shall see. Lata hurried home to tell her mother what she had seen, her large ears turning pink with excitement. Oh, the snake was frightening, she stammered. His bright, shining jewel was like a third eye that could look right inside me. The old woman began to sputter with rage. I knew the girl had some magic in her life. The fortune tellers warned me about her. They told me if she would find a way to cause us trouble. Just then, Zinduri rushed to the door, breathless. Stepmother, Lata, I saw some drummers on the road to town. A messenger was, a messenger was marching behind them, telling everyone the news. The crown prince is coming to the village. He will be here on the ninth of the ninth night of the Navart. Teethest Navaratsi. Oh my goodness, hang on. Uh, on the ninth night of the Navaratri festival. There we go. Each night, the young people gathered around harvest time around the outdoor pavilion to meet the friends and dance for, night, for nine evenings. Sinduri was eager to attend. She hoped she might catch a glimpse of the young prince she'd heard so much about. But when Sinduri asked for permission to attend the last night of the festival, her stepmother responded with a harsh laugh. Oh, no, you shall have to stay home and do your work. Lata, laughing like her mother, added, Besides, you have nothing to wear, Sinduri. You would embarrass us with those filthy rags of yours. Sinduri huddled into the corner miserably and watched the two women search through the family trunks. They pulled out shiny earrings, necklaces, toe rings, and belts. They draped bright veils around themselves and happily made plans for attending the festival. Sinduri gave a tiny sob as she watched them try on a chain that had once decorated the slim ankle of her own mother. At, at last, the ninth evening of Navaratri arrived, and the arti lamp would be lit by the visiting crown prince. Stepmother and Lata were dressed in all their finery. They stepped into their carriage. Stepmother told Lata, Maybe tonight you will meet your future husband, or maybe you will even meet the prince. Pinch your cheeks and smooth your hair. Then she glared at Sinduri and snapped, Stop staring, Sinduri. Get back to work. Sinduri sadly went about her household duties. After putting the last bundle of clean straw into the animal pens, she ran off to the lake. She had to tell Godfather how much she missed going to the festival. When she arrived, she sang again. Godfather Snake, oh Godfather Snake, Godfather Snake of the Magic Lake, come to my help for your daughter's sake. The snake slipped up into sight. Immediately, Sinduri told him of all her troubles. 
my beautiful little goddaughter. You deserve one magical evening, he responded. He bent in her direction. See this beautiful jewel on my forehead? Take it, he commanded. She obeyed him, even though the jewel felt hot to her touch. Don't drop it, he warned. Now turn round and round like this. She watched the snake twist his body in a circle, and she copied the movements. As she slowly twirled, she found herself being wrapped in a cloth of the purest gold threads. Magnificent jewels appeared in her hair and at her throat, and she heard her feet tinkling gently, and she looked down at her ankles. She saw two of the most beautiful anklets she had ever seen, decorated with tiny bells and covered with diamonds that sparkled in the moonlight. Go to the festival. But by midnight, when they light the candle, you must return home. The magic will be over. Thank you, Godfather, for this beautiful gift, Cindery whispered as she clutched his jewel in her hands. No matter what happens, I promise to leave at midnight. When Sindhuri arrived at the Navarati festival, everyone turned to stare at her. Who is that beautiful princess, they whispered. One handsome young man asked her himself, Who are you, beautiful princess? And the prince of Sir Yana Gar, as he stepped toward her. She looked up into his eyes, but said nothing. He asked her to dance for him, and she tried to remember the flowing motions of her beloved godfather, the snake. She twirled and dipped, and the anklets jingled on her feet. The festival lights made her dark eyes shine. As she danced, the prince watched her every motion, falling more and more in love with her with every twist and turn. Late, later, everyone gathered to light the lamp for the goddess Durga, in whose honor the festival was held each year. The prince said to Sinduri, It is midnight, time for the arti. They have asked me to perform the ceremony, and I want you to join me. Midnight, she gasped, and she remembered her promise to Godfather Snake. I must go. She dashed away through the crowd. The prince tried to catch her, following the sound of the bells on her feet, but she, sho she soon up disappeared into darkness, and he caught sight of something sparkling on the ground. As he bent to pick it up, he realized it was one of her anklets. He stared into the dark night, remembering her eyes, her hair, her gentle smile. There and then he vowed to love her forever. There's some dancing. The next morning, the powerful king of Suryangar told his son, it is time for you to marry. He began suggesting some of the important noble ladies who could be his bride. But father, last night at the festival, I met the one I must marry. I just don't know who she is. We have to find her, the prince said. He pulled the tiny anklet from his pocket. I will marry the owner of this anklet and no one else. The king called forth messengers. He told them to go to every village. He proclaimed, have all the young maidens to try on the anklet. The girl who can fit her foot through it will become the bride of the crown prince. Stepmother was very excited for this news. She said, the prince will be in our village this very afternoon. Lata, you must make the anklet fit you, and then the prince will marry you. That is what the king has said. Sinduri asked, may I please come with you and try on the anklet too? You? Oh no, Lata. Lata and I will go first. You can come later if you finish all your work, she said with a sneer. She never for a moment considered that little Sinduri, with her ragged dress and little bare feet, would ever be the beautiful lady the princess was looking for. Sindura began her chores with a hopeless feeling. There was so much to do. By the time she finished her work, the prince would be gone. He would move on to the next town, trying the anklet on every young woman, and she would never get to tell him how much she loved him. Sinduri hurried off to sell vegetables to the neighbors. Then she came back and began her sewing and mending. As her stepmother and Lata swept out the door, as her stepmother and Lata swept out the door, they, they reminded her that she must weed the vegetable garden in addition to all her other chores. Sinduri knew there was no time to rush to the lake and seek the help of her godfather, the snake. 
Then she remembered his magical jewel, which was hidden inside the bodice of her dress. As soon as she cradled the bright stone in her hands, she saw miraculous changes all around her. The house was clean, the butter was churned, the weeds were all gone, and the fresh water and straw had appeared in all the animal pens. Her work was all done, and her dirty dress had become clean, without a patch on it. Oh, again, my dear godfather has helped me, she said, putting the jewel back into its hiding place. As she hurried towards the pavilion, she whispered over and over, I hope I am not too late. Sinduri peeked through the girls circled around the prince. One after another, they tried to squeeze their feet into the anklet. Stepmother pulled Lata forward for her turn. The prince knelt before her. The girl made terrible faces trying to twist her foot through the anklet, but it was no use. Let us move to the next town, the king said in a booming voice. There I hope my son will find the woman he loves. The prince stood up to leave and caught sight of Sinduri. One more, he said, holding out his hand towards her. Sinduri sh shyly moved forward. Everyone heard Sinduri's stepmother say in a shrill voice, What are you doing here, Sinduri? Are you sure you've finished all your work? You will get a beating if you have anything left undone. Quiet, everyone, ordered the prince. Let her try the anklet. He slipped her foot through the jeweled circle. There was a gasp as, in the crowd as Sinduri pulled from her pocket the matching anklet that she kept hidden away. This proved she was the same girl who had danced to the prince and won his heart. Now, wearing both anklets, and she made a slow twirling motion as her snake godfather had taught her. When she finished her turn, she was standing before the people of the town, dressed in a beautiful sari and all the sparkling jewelry she had won on the festival night. With a sparkle in his eyes that made Sinduri's heart beat wildly, the prince proclaimed, This beautiful princess must be my bride. Mr. Prime Minister, plan a great celebration, the king announced. This wedding will take place on the evening of the next full moon. The king was delighted that his son had claimed such a beautiful and gentle bride. An enormous invitation was posted on the palace gates, inviting everyone to the kingdom to come and witness the royal wedding. Sinduri rode to the wedding ceremony in a carriage, carried on the sh shoulders of many servants. Walking with stately grace, she entered the special marquee built for the occasion. Inside, a fire was burning. A costumed gentleman of the court blew into a large conch shell to announce the start of the marriage ceremony. The prince put out a garland of fragrant white, white jasmine flowers around Sindari's neck, and she put one around his. They promised to love and cherish each other for the rest of their lives. When the ceremony was over, the prince whispered to his bride, My father has built us a beautiful palace. She said, slyly, shyly, I have a special friend. He is my godfather. And as she spoke, she touched the red jewel fastened on her scarf close to her heart. I hope that I may bring him here to visit our new home. Let's start with the garland. The prince ordered a large pond built in the gardens of the new palace so that Godfather Snake could come and live near them and continue to bless their lives. But he told Sinduri, your stepmother, her daughter, no, no, they are not coming to live with us. I know how badly they treated you. Once the two women had to, to, once the two women had to do all their work themselves, they did it very poorly. The animals got hungry and ran away. In the garden, there were more weeds than vegetables, and the house was a mess with no fresh food on the table. Finally, Lata and her mother gave up on the farm and ran away to wander the countryside. Godfather Snake told Sinduri. While they live as poor beggars, you will live for many thousands of happy days in this palace with your handsome prince, and some day you will be a loved and honored queen. The princess Sinduri put her hands together in respect and bowed her head slightly and said, All because of you, dear godfather. I thank you. The end. Okay, so that was a bit of a longer one. But um, I really think it's really interesting. It's a really cool story that, like I said, comes from India, or at least is uh, centered in India. Um, it is, the, the author's note says that though this version of Cinderella set in India is similar to the European fairy tale, it is believed that the story is at least a thousand years old and has been preserved in oral traditions all these years. 
That means people have been telling this story for many, many years. And that means that basically other cultures were coming up with the same kind of story at different times. Really interesting stuff. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a great week. I look forward to seeing you soon. I hope you enjoyed that story. Bye.